Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be further enhancing our features in our status effect class. And what we will be doing is essentially adding functionality and communication between the other systems that we've created so far. So uh, now we start to see the systems coming together, working together and accomplishing pretty cool things. So opening up our BP status effect, we can now have a similar approach to what we've had before when it came to the preventing tags and required tags, which would essentially affect how our code was running logically. Now instead, we can add features like attributes or properties. So, for example, if we have a status effect here called maybe Ignite or something like that, you might want to put a property on the character saying that it is burning, for example. And maybe you have three different status effects that all do different things, but one thing that they have in common is that they also set the character on fire, meaning they put this burning property on it. Then you can have some other part of your code which just listens to the tag burning and then maybe puts a visual effect on your character so that it looks burning. So you don't need to put this code in all of these different status effects duplicating it, but instead you can then handle it in that one place where you have your special effect being driven by your tags. That's just an example. And you can have all kinds of status effects like a property like you're being stunned or or whatever frozen uh, slowed anything you feel like essentially so this is what we will be doing today so starting off what we need to do is we need to have first our list to actually um, do some kind of like adding tags to our system so we'll create a variable and we'll call this just simply um, adding tags and we'll make this of the variable type gameplay. Now we want to have the ability to have multiple tags being added if we want to. So we'll create an array out of this. Like so, and now you might wonder why would you want to have an array? Well, if we do something like this, if we add just a random uh, let's do gameplay tag. You might wonder why would we not use a container instead? So gameplay tag container here. We have the ability to say uh, we want to, on the gameplay tags, you can see all the functions that we have available to us. One of them is append gameplay tag containers, which essentially does as the, the information says here, it appends all the tags in a gameplay tag container into another gameplay tag container. And that is sort of what we want to do. However, we want to run this through our logic that we have in our um, gameplay tag component logic, which we have made code for adding one tag at a time. And the reason for this is so we can have the ability to stack items. So we won't have the luxury of having a container in this specific case like that. So we'll remove that. But instead we will be having a array. It means that instead of having like this very neat like uh, box of... Uh, let's add that back again. Uh, this is our gameplay tag container. Yeah, so instead this is what we had. So we could then go and say we want to have immunity and we want to have the dead state added and all of these things. It's very neat to work with. We don't have that luxury. However, it's not that much worse because we uh, having a gameplay tag array means we just add an element, then we add the state that we want to have, then we add another element, and then we say we want to have the immunity one or something like that. So it, it's, it's not uh, too horrible, uh, but it's also maybe not the most clean way of doing that. But now you know why we're doing it, essentially. So what do we want to do now? Well, we need to have an ability where we actually add these tags, right? And we don't want to have it when we're attempting application because we might be failing that. So at the start of start.fix is a good place to put it. We'll create a function. We call it add tags. Inside of add tags, 
we will just simply be taking our adding tags component or not component our array sorry and we will be looping this like so so we go through each of the different elements and what we want to do here is add it to our gameplay tag uh, component right so now we're currently this status effect is applied to whoever is going to get the effect right because that's where what we do when we apply a status effect we put it the owner becomes the player that's or the character or actor that's supposed to have it so we know from here that getting owner will get us the character that we are after uh, so we can use this to get the component by class and we can get the gameplay BPC gameplay tags, which is our properties, which is what we're trying to add here. Dragging from this, we can say add tag. <clears throat> and now from our loop body, we can say add a tag. And the tag that we're supposed to add is going to be the array element here. So we hook that up. And then we want to have an origin as well. We'll make an origin. And the origin will consist of the actor. And we get the, we can actually drag from this and get instigator. Sorry, instigator controller. Like so. And hook it up like that. Now, you may want to think that um, the actor here is incorrect because Let's say it's a different player that puts this debuff or status effect on us. Then we would want to have that uh, actor as the actual person who is adding the tag, right? And that's a valid point. You might want to have it like that way. Uh, in this case, this status effect here will have the instigate controller of the player that actually puts that on you. So if you wanted to do that, you could get the uh, controlled on of this instigate controller then and hook that up into the actor here. However, in, in my case here, I, I think that this is fine having it like uh, this character being assigned as the causer of this tag being added because it is getting added by him by the status effect he has, but we also have the knowledge of which controller was also responsible for it. So if we want to act upon this information at a later time, then we're completely able to do so. So this is a bit about, pre about preference, essentially. But now we have essentially added all of the different tags that we have, and we're done. So we'll return. Okay, now we want to do the opposite. And why? Well, if we go back to our event graph, we're going to be adding our tags here after we have started our status effect. But let's say that we are poisoned, like we have poison already, uh, we might want to add a property tag saying that we're poisoned for some reason to react on later. And once this status effect expires, that tag should also be removed, right? So we want to have it on our end status effect here to actually remove all of these things. So that's why we will be doing exactly the same thing, but in reverse for that. So we will take the add tags, we will copy it, Actually, we will duplicate it, sorry. And we'll rename it <clears throat> Remove Tags. And the only thing we need to do here is drag out from the component class and say Remove Tag. <clears throat> and then we hook it up here instead. Like so. There we go. And then also the origin, of course, over here. And yeah, so now we can go back to our event graph and we can say uh, remove tag. There we go. So on this function and do it like so. So let's create a simple test for this. So we'll go to our properties or product settings, sorry, and we'll add a gameplay tag. 
and we'll just add one that represents being poisoned in some way. So let's say we have a, because we have a status effect that says we're poisoned, but this is supposed to be like a property, right? So let's say property dot uh, poisons. And again, th this might not make a whole lot of sense since we already have one for poisoned, but this is just to show you how it could be done if you had like a burning effect or something like that, right? Or any, any other effects. <laughs> So we have property poisoned. So we can go to our, uh, see where if we can find it, our status effect here that is poison. And we'll say, in addition to this, it will also be adding the tag of property poisoned. And going back to our character now, we can see we have on which key is it? The nine key adds the status effect to us. So let's see what happens then, because I think we already have some debugging code available to us now. So let's press 9. You can see that we get property poisoned and property poisoned 0 now. So it, it got added while we had the status effect on us, and then it got removed once the status effect ended. So that's good. That's essentially what we want to achieve with the, that functionality. Let's take a moment to follow how the logic actually goes so that everything makes sense if you're watching. Um, so what we have is, in the case where we had here, we spawn a status effect and we add it to our uh, status effect component in this case. Adding the status effect, we'll then get our active uh, status effects and add this one to it. And then we'll do the, the event dispatcher that we did before. Then we'll attempt to apply this status effect over here. So going to our base class, we will then apply. We will check if it has no start conditions that is preventing it. And we had this poison immunity, but we didn't activate it this time. So it goes in here and says start the status effect. It comes over here and it adds the tag. So we now have the poisoned property tag added to us. It then sets up the timers and they run their course and once they're done and we end up with the end status effect we then remove the tag again so we don't have the property anymore and our stack handling system that we created in the attribute system if we go check on that here you can see we have our oh, sorry not attribute system my bad i meant the gameplay tag system so we have the add stack, so when we get to the part of the status effect where we're adding it, we're just adding the tag name to find if this exists among our stack tags. If it does, we add one to it. If it does not, we just create one that has one in stack on it. And then once the status effect is removed, we go in here and we do the same thing but opposite. We find the tag name in our stack tags array, or rather map, and then we reduce it by one and if it has reached zero then we remove the stack from our actually actual map here so we don't have it remaining anymore so that's the entire flow after that we have just cleared the timers and attempted to remove the stack from our status effect from the yeah, the status effect component like we spoke about in the last episode so that's all the functionality that we want to do today however we want to do one more thing I had an eagle eye viewer that actually noticed we have made an error and we would have run into this later on and had to fix this, but we might as well fix it now. Uh, so if we go to the blueprint components for attribute and we go into the change attribute value one, you can see that we are switching on our attribute type. So this is where we say which kind of a type we want to change uh, with this input that we're getting. So we have the base value, the delta, the multiplier, and the max. All of these are things that we can change. But when we're setting the members for our attribute, you can see that all of them say base value. They're not corresponding to what these are saying. And that's because when I did this before, I forgot to show you that we need to unhook the base pin for the one that's going to be delta, and we take the delta pin instead. Then we hook that up. We do the same thing for this one, but this one should not be base but multiplier. And then we hook that one up. And lastly, we remove the base value and add a max value, and we hook that one up so that this functionality should now be working moving forward. I think that might be a good place to stop for now. I hope to see you in the next episode.
hopefully found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.